So I've got a sequence here, and I'd like for us to think about whether or not this converges, and if it does converge, what it converges to. Well, the first thing that jumps out to me here is I've got a factorial in the numerator, and I know the factorial function, that increases really fast. It, it increases faster than any polynomial function. It increases faster even than any exponential function. So just at first glance, I mean, you could kind of think, yeah, okay, this is going to go off to infinity. It's going to diverge. But the denominator here is special. It, it's a mixture of a polynomial function and an exponential function because it's, it's got a variable in both the base and the exponent. Okay, that I'm not so sure about. Maybe that, that's going to increase so fast, it's even going to manage to out, outpace that factorial, and this will end up being maybe a constant, maybe zero. All right, so let's take a look at this. That's just our formula, right, for a sub n. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out the numerator and denominator. I'm going to make the numerator n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times all the way down to times 2 times 1. And in the denominator, I'm going to write out n times itself n times. Now, what I want you to notice here is that there are n factors in the numerator and n factors in the denominator. So I'm going to, I'm going to split this up. I'm going to take the first two terms, the n and the n, and I'm going to make that this first fraction. Then I'm going to take the second two terms, n minus 1 and n, I've got the second fraction, and so on, n minus 2 over n, all the way down to the n. All right, so we've got n, fra n fractions multiplied together. Now, if you look at each of these individual fractions, every one of these is less than or equal to 1. Right? Because the first one, the numerator and denominator are equal. Okay, so that one actually equals 1. But in every other factor, the numerator is smaller than the denominator. I mean, it's going to be less than or equal to 1. Right? Now, remember, if you multiply something by a number between 0 and 1, it gets smaller. Right? So if I just eliminate every term here and just keep this last one, what effect does that have? Well, 1 over n is going to be bigger than what I have before because I'm not multiplying it by all of these small numbers anymore. So my original formula is less than or equal to 1 over n. Hopefully now you see how this is starting to feel like a sandwich theorem, squeeze theorem situation. All right, so what this means is we kind of eliminate the middle bit here. a sub n is less than or equal to 1 over n, and it's greater than or equal to 0 because n is uh, always positive. Now we can apply the squeeze theorem. Right? Both of these terms on, on the end, those both go to zero. My limit is squeezed in between them, so the limit of, of my sequence as n goes to infinity is also going to be zero. So the sequence does converge, right? and zero is what it converges to. So if you'd like to get the full context, you can click on the link here to see the corresponding lecture. And if you like this example or found it helpful, please go ahead and click on the like button below.